And one of the lessons of the last couple of days is how thin the line can be between government loyalists and rebel. When policies can shift within the space of a few hours, MPs considered friends of the Whips could quickly find themselves foes. And we're joined now by two nailed-on Tory rebels from different ends of the party. Marcus Fish is the MP for Yeovil and wants to leave the single market and customs union. Uh, and the amendment he put his name to was controversially accepted by the government yesterday. Dominic Grieve voted against the government today and wants as close a relationship to the EU as possible, and that includes being within a customs union. Uh, good evening to you both. Um, Marcus Fish, let me start um, with you. Is the Chequers proposal, the plan, is that alive at the moment in your view? Well, look, it has been an excitable week, um, but I think we achieved some, some very important things this week. It was very important to get this legislation through. This is fundamental sort of no-deal preparation uh, uh, legislation, it will enable us to to es essentially set the frameworks for is, our is trade. Is the Chequers deal alive? That is government well, policy as I understand it. Is that what you understand government policy to be? Well, I, I don't know what their current thoughts are because I'm not a member of the government. But You're I, a member of the I government party. You voted today I, with I don't the government agree. you don't know what the policy is. I don't is. agree with the Chequers policy. No, I don't. Because but you know it's the policy and you're willing to support it. Uh, no, I'm not willing to support that, that policy. I'm not willing to support the Chequers deal. Um, so I for think you, it's Chequers is thing. dead, and that's why you voted wrong, for the government. I think it's the wrong thing for the country to pursue that particular negotiating why did you vote for the government, then? Path. It's their policy. Because this was about the, the enacting legislation to enable us to be able to, to make all the preparations that we need to, to be able to have a smooth exit from the EU. For no deal. Well, for, Basically, for, a, for a world trade terms deal uh, and lot, lots of other side legislation that, that, that can enable a, a smooth exit, I am not a no-deal person. I want to see a deal. I want to see a com comprehensive of course, free trade buy agreement. Of course, we like, haven't got an answer like for was the Northern in our Irish manifesto. Factor. You what don't have an not, answer for Northern Ireland. What was they not in our manifesto was a customs union and single right. market. Well, the, I'm sure and the, EU the will people be... of Britain don't want us to right. do that. But you don't have a solution to Northern Ireland that the EU will find acceptable. So it's I think no I deal. do, and I've been working with so the government no, to try to put that on the table. They've not listened, and that's one of the reasons right. why but they they're in the mess that they are. And it doesn't matter what you think, it matters what they think if we're going to get a deal. So we're heading to no deal under your plan, aren't well, we? Well, I do think that, that this particular negotiating strategy won't, fa won't uh, pass the first test of engagement right. with the EU, because I think the EU right. will just say, that isn't good enough, we want more. I think it's unrealistic of us to, to expect them to, to sort of change the way that they do things just, just for us. And, and I think it would be much better to, to have a normal relationship between two different regulatory mm. and customs and just jurisdictions, one, if Mrs. and that's just fine. If Mrs May continues to believe in government policy um, and the policy she said she was promoting <coughs> by the votes today and by the votes yesterday, what do you do? Well, as I've said, I, I'm very keen to, for the government to change that policy. And you'll change and to Well, that's... That, that I'm not going to get drawn into. It's about policy and it's about a plan for the people of Britain, uh, for the country, for our businesses. And if we all put our, our sort of shoulders to the wheel and get behind it, this is absolutely doable. And I really think we need to come together now and get behind a, a proper negotiating position. Dominic Grieve, position. if nothing happens between now and March the 29th, we fall out of the EU with no deal, correct? If nothing happens, but that won't be the case. Now, how is that not the case? Because if there is no deal, I don't see how you get a vote on no deal. You get a vote on a deal. It's not even, some people don't even think it's a meaningful vote. I'm, I'm quite sure in my own mind that if we got to the point where it was clear there was no deal, uh, there would be a major political crisis. And I think that in those circumstances, Parliament would assert its authority. That might mean the breakup of the current party system. And I think that's something I have to live with, although it's not something I would wish to see happen. But as I've said on many occasions, there is no possibility that I, as a member of parliament, would accept going along with a line which said that we had to accept no deal and drop off the right. cliff, so because the consequences economically and for our national security would be so serious. This is really important. So I, what I don't understand is what form... I, I, I mean, a lot of people think there's a huge majority against no deal in the House of Commons. What form can that rebellion take? I mean, it, is it essentially a lot of Conservatives crossing the House, joining the opposition. I don't see how it works. The, the, the difficulty we've got at the moment is that for understandable reasons of loyalty and also actually, yeah. and it applies on both sides of the House, people wanting to try and find a way through this, 
I think that there were many in political parties who won't put their heads above the parapet. Right. But the evidence suggests to me that if it comes to the crunch, there will be a substantial majority in Parliament seeking to do something to prevent a no-deal right. Brexit taking place. What can they actually play? do? I mean, I, I hear that you, 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 you know, you basically say no deal is more important to you but than it, remaining it, it, loyal it to be, the Tories. It will be a, it will be a major political crisis, right? And, and it will either lead a to a motion. It, uh, it, well, either the government will have to change its position. Or the government might fall. That could precipitate a general election. Or that could precipitate the, the Queen going to someone else to form or, a caretaker or government. Or it could be a, a caretaker or national government being formed. And it might lead, as Justine Greening has suggested, to having to go back and consult the public about what they really want. Because I'm the first to accept, if we have paralysis, that at the end of the day, we can't disregard the public's vote in the referendum two years ago. So th these are really complicated matters, and I'm the first to accept this is a, an terrible hole into which our country has got itself. A lot of people are reading Nicholas Shakespeare's book, Six Minutes in May. It's about the fall of Chamberlain's government after the Norway crisis at the beginning of the Second World War. Have you been looking at that recently? That brought down a, an unpopular government and formed a national I, government. I haven't Have read that, that one, but I'm a historian by, by education. This is what I read at university. I'm familiar with national crises, and there's no doubt that we are in the biggest peacetime crisis in our, crisis in our modern history. So this is a very unusual state of affairs, and we have got to try, as members of parliament, to exercise our best judgment to find a way through that can and I that just, is what we try to can do. Can I get a final comment on that from you Marcus Fish because he's right the numbers are on his side in the Commons there are there is no majority in the Commons for no deal. Well look as I said I don't want no deal right, that's I think it's point. about well no I don't think it need, needs to be like that at all I've been speaking to, to, but to let's the, if it comes the Germans to that, here in London if it for comes example, to that and they've been saying why haven't you put a text on the table for a free trade agreement they're perfectly happy to speak about that and that's an excellent outcome. A, a, a Canada plus, plus, plus with lots of side agreements, lots of work that the government can do to help business get ready for a new system. That's entirely doable. And it, I really think we need to show some spine and just get on with it. Thank you both very much. Thank you, Dean.